If you've been trying to improve your consistency, the chances are you've already watched a bunch of different videos about tennis technique. You've gone out on court, you've tried it, and it hasn't quite worked in the way that you'd hoped. So you've continued searching and you've got to this video. Now, what you need to understand is that ultimately your level of consistency comes down to your ability to control the angle of the racket face at the moment of contact. And that comes down to your eye to hand coordination. You look at all the best players in the world, we've got a tremendous variety of different techniques, but they all have unbelievable racket head control and unbelievable coordination. That's why kind of you look old school, they're just using a continental grip and still playing ridiculous tennis. So if you want consistency, that's what you need to improve. There's obviously things that you can do on court to try and improve your racket head control. You know, just trying to play with manipulating the ball rather than trying to focus on the one perfect stroke because that doesn't exist. You might want to think about trying to hit your forehand more flat, hit it with more spin, just literally play around with the way that you practice. But still, you're going to get to a point where your level of coordination is the limiting factor. So that is what I want to focus on in this video. I want to show you a very simple assessment that you can do to kind of figure out what's happening with your coordination and then talk about a couple of the ways that you can start to train and improve your coordination so that then combined with better quality practice you can really improve your racket hair control and become a much much better player. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up and if you enjoy this sort of content really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel as well. So we're gonna be doing a test called rapid alternating pronation and supination. That's a lot of words, but it is a really big deal in terms of your ability to control the angle of your racket face. Pronation and supination are movements that happen at your forearm. Pronation is this, where I turn my palm down, so it's facing towards the floor. Supination is this, when I turn my palm upwards. And if you're still not excited, pronation is the thing that allows you to create topspin and a lot of racket head speed on your forehand. Pronation is also the thing that allows you to create a lot of racket head speed on your serve and it helps to direct both of those in terms of where the ball's going to go. Supination is what we're going to be using on the backhand. So if I'm hitting a top spin backhand with my one-hander, I'm doing supination to create that spin. If I'm hitting a two-hander, my right hand is supinating, my left hand is pronating. So your ability to do this movement at high speed and with accuracy is a massive, massive deal in terms of your ability to play with consistency, especially as you start to increase the speed of your shot. So we're assessing the parts of the brain that coordinate movement. This isn't a random assessment. This is an assessment that you could go to a neurologist or you could go to a physio or someone like that. And they would use this assessment to assess function in this brain area. So it really is an important assessment. So I'm gonna put my racket down and show you how to do it because the way that you do it is gonna be crucial for getting results. You're gonna have both elbows tucked into your side I'm then going to be using my right hand, holding my left palm flat, and I'm going to be hitting the front and back of my hand on the palm of my hand, like that. So the target is right here, right in the center of my hand, and I'm hitting with the front and the back, like so. So this is what I'm doing. But when I do that, we're looking for the accuracy of the movement, we're looking for the speed of the movement, we're looking for the endurance of the movement. So in terms of accuracy, I'm going to keep my elbows touching my side, I'm not squeezing them in, I'm just holding them there. And I'm then going to flip backwards and forwards. If you're not very accurate, what might happen is you might start to hit your fingers. So I might be doing this and kind of hitting my fingers, or maybe I'm bending my hand to cheat it a little bit and now I'm hitting my fingers. Or you might hit your wrist. Or as you try and go quicker, you might start to double tap and kind of do anything other than just good, clean, twisting, slapping motions. The other thing that could happen is the elbow might start to come away. So you're going to assess this both sides. Right side, left side, do about five seconds each. Maybe repeat the test three times. We're also going to be looking for kind of the rhythm and the speed. And mainly what we're looking to do is do it as fast as we can while still maintaining the accuracy. Because ultimately, that's what tennis is all about. 
the faster you can maintain accurate movements, that lets you hit with power and control and really allows you to maintain the consistency. So do that assessment, see what you find. Was one side accurate? Was the other side inaccurate? Were there any differences? And then we'll talk about what we can do with that. So in terms of those assessments, how did you get on? Did you find there was an accuracy issue where you were kind of hitting the side or double tapping? You know, was it on both hands? Was it on one of the hands? Did things start to change as you went faster? You know, what was it you found? Because anything we found there is gonna provide a lot of potential for improvement with you. If you didn't notice anything, maybe it's worth recording yourself because sometimes players' body awareness isn't quite where it needs to be and there's pretty obvious stuff going on but they can't really tell themselves. So if you record it and watch it back or get someone to watch you, often you'll find something. If you were absolutely amazing in terms of just rapid fire both sides, that's awesome. Now, I'm still going to recommend that you work on your coordination because the more coordinated you are, the better you'll be. And it's always nice to have more control on your shots. But if you want to try and prioritize your training and you're struggling with consistency, maybe it means you might need to focus on something else. So often for players, the visual prediction, the ability to read where the ball's going, we might start to explore those things. But back to kind of these assessments, the biggest thing that we're gonna try and do initially is correct side-to-side -side imbalances. So if your right side is really good and your left side is really problematic, that's something that we want to try and address. You would think that a right-hander should be more coordinated and it's okay for the left hand to be lagging a little bit, but that isn't the case. With this particular skill, you should be equally as good on both sides. And some of the biggest improvements that I've had with my forehand were from improving the coordination on my left side. I always used to struggle with timing forehands. That was kind of my big sticking point my whole life. Um, and by correcting the left-sided deficit, it completely changed my timing because the part of the brain that we're assessing in terms of left side coordination is what helps to kind of drive our rotation. So we want side to side balance correction. Now the way that we can go about that and the way that we can go about improving any deficit is twofold. We've got direct training. So for direct training, if I've got a sucky right hand coordination, I'm gonna do coordination drills for my right hand. So that could mean different things. I could be trying to do a coordinated wrist circle, really thinking about the shape so that my brain has to create a movement plan and coordinate different things. Maybe I wanna try and make accurate circles with my fingers because that's gonna be controlled by the same part of the brain. Maybe I wanna hold my racket and make circles or figure of eights. I'm choosing these shapes because they require the brain to think and correct and coordinate stuff and it kind of challenges things. But this isn't the sort of thing where you can just do one wrist circle and it's gonna solve all of your problems. To improve your coordination, you have to progressively make things more challenging over time, just like with other styles of training. Now, where people can go wrong with this, they can think, okay, this is too simple an exercise. I'm already working on my coordination and with my tennis, but often tennis strokes are too complicated. There's too many things going on and it's just too much too soon. Kind of like, okay, I wanna start running, let's start out with a marathon or I wanna start lifting weights. Okay, let's put a thousand pounds on my back and try and squat. Hitting tennis strokes with poor quality coordination is a little bit like that. Often you need to start out much smaller, build the coordination up until you're able to more efficiently do it within the strokes. But we've got direct training, so doing coordination drills with your hands, with your fingers, with your wrists, and progressively challenging them over time. Direct coordination training can take you a long, long way, but sometimes it might be enough to get you to where you need to be in terms of your level of coordination, because it's always a relative thing. You know, if you want to play 4-0 tennis, you can have 4-0 coordination, but if you want to play 5-0 tennis, 4-0 or 4.5 coordination isn't going to cut it. You need to improve up to that point. And sometimes there's kind of sticking things within our bodies and within our brains because of the way things are wired. So we might need to do additional training drills to try and switch on and improve the function in these parts of the brain that create and coordinate movement. And depending what we saw in those assessments, it might mean a slightly different thing because of the pathways that are involved. So if during that hand wraps test, I found that I really lacked accuracy, 
that kind of points us towards certain parts of the brain. So we might want to do certain training drills. And you can actually do a little bit of a test and a retest on this one. So you can test your hand wraps, see how accurate it is, and then do a couple of training drills for some of the key brain areas. So you could look at your thumb and turn your head left to right about five times, retest it, and see whether it improves the accuracy because that particular drill targets a certain part of the brain. You could test it going up and down and then see whether that improves your accuracy. Whereas if your accuracy is pretty good, but you're just really slow and it doesn't matter what happens, you can't make it go any faster, we might wanna think about other drills that are more targeted towards parts of the brain involved in rhythm and speed of movements. So there, we might wanna start doing some breathing work or maybe some vision drills, because that's gonna give us some opportunity. So it could be a case of looking at my thumb and drawing some thumb circles and kind of tracking the, my thumb with my eyes, maybe three to five circles in each direction, retest it, see what happens, and that might really speed things up. Or maybe you wanna do some pencil push-ups, and then that speeds things up. So, you know, you can watch this back again and test those drills out right now to see if it improves your coordination, and often you'll find it will make a big difference. But that's just kind of a couple of the options that are available to us. Ultimately, the best way to go about this stuff is to do a whole bunch of assessments, figure out what's working well, what's not working well in your body, and create targeted training drills and training programs to improve your coordination as much as possibly we possibly can, because the more coordinated you are, the better you are at tennis, and you cannot play at a level higher than either your coordination or your visual function will allow. Now, if that's something you would like to learn more about, it's one of the big things that I help tennis players with. I've created a masterclass that's gonna go into a lot more detail about it. I'll place a link up there so you can check it out, and I'll place a link down there so you can check it out. And I've got a program that I work with players via. When you sign up for that free masterclass, if you get to the end of the masterclass, it's gonna tell you a little bit about my program and the next steps that are involved, if that's something you would potentially like to explore. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed the video. I would love to hear your comments and thoughts on what I've covered. Leave them down below, and I'll catch you next time.